Uh, so I'm Lillian, as Dylan said, from Decibel Architecture, and I'm going to be presenting John Holland's next home. So our client, John Holland, is an established engineering company with a 70-year history in Melbourne, and as part of their rebranding and expansion, they decided to bring their two existing Melbourne offices into one new home on Flinders Street in the CBD. Um, so they really wanted to change their image from this blokey construction company back to the roots of the original family business. And if you look at these images that are directly from their newly branded website, it's really all about the people. So yes, they do build rail tunnels, but it's more important that this rail tunnel gets you home in time. And they've even actually changed their logo to this new hum human symbol, which we actually nicknamed Jane Holland. Um, this is one of our very early concept images, and it's an image of mechanical engineers drafting a Boeing aircraft wing at one-to-one -one scale, because at the time they didn't have CAD and so they couldn't zoom in and out. And this collage really represents that harmony that can exist between intense, furious work and environment focused on health and nature. So they really wanted a home where contractors could come directly in off-site with their dusty boots and not feel like they were walking into a corporate office where they were too afraid to touch anything or get things dirty. So this brief really did focus on placing people at the centre of all their decisions. Uh, the base building is uh, designed by SJB Architects, 180 Flinders Street, and John Holland has leased the top three levels, including an outdoor terrace. So being in Melbourne's heart, the site is completely encompassed by enriching aspects of human life. And we've tried to reflect these elements within the design. So there's the natural, the civic, the cultural, creative, social, and the intellectual. Uh, now, we all know how inspiring it can be to see something that you've actually built come to life, and especially while you're working. So it was really vital, vital for us to have these vistas in the design. So the team can literally look up from any desk and see a John Holland project that's already been built, such as Sydney My uh, Music Bowl, or some inspiration from the city and nature. And these are the, some of the views that you can see from there. So there's Fed Square, the Yarra, Flinders Street Station, South Bank, and the Botanical Gardens. Now, to, on to journey and flow. Um, reflecting John Holland's values, Next Home was really about creating the best possible journey within the space. So it's not simply about getting to the destination. And on a typical journey around the office, you can stumble across a whole myriad of different moments. You might be working, walking from your desk to the toilet, but along the way, you'll pass a great view or some greenery or a nourishment point. This is the original base building plan that was done by SJB with a conventional car parking grid. And we really felt that this grid was restricting to the logic of designing the actual interiors for people and people activities. So these are some of our uh, initial sketches which show how we began to break this grid. So we overlaid views, daylight, and we're really putting people and purpose first. And you can see that the rectangular core has even been broken. So the progression then goes on to weaving the program into the spaces. So the end user really should feel inspired and creative, not restricted within this box, until you basically can't even see the original rectangular grid anymore. Uh, these images of the built products, they show the flow and the view with daylight vistas, and they also serve as wayfinding tools. The project was actually completed last year in September, which was the height of COVID. So unfortunately, all COVID. these images only have Dylan in them but you can get the feeling. <laughs> so this is the original base building render, which shows the uh, atrium intention. Bland. And then this is the proposed uh, built atrium that got built with our new connections, uh, connecting people across the entire organisation. So the original vertical connection was really only by elevator, and the addition of these stairs encourages physical movement within the office for health and well-being. Now, these newly created landings, which really are my favourite part of the project, they've become breakout spaces that actually feel like they're outside. And we added these bamboo haiku fans, which you can see in the images, and it really feels like there's a light breeze blowing. And then with the daylight flooding in from the northern facade, it genuinely feels like you're outside. We actually thought people might accidentally smoke there. Um, the finish on the stairs is a natural cork product, which provides a soft tread to walk on. And so by the time these plants really start to proliferate, it's going to tie all the biophilia together. So I think unless you're injured or had a disability, I don't think anyone's going to be choosing to take the lift over the stairs. Uh, working and gathering, we knew that we had to fit 500 staff in these three levels. And these are some of the original team lists that were given us to, um, from the client. And as you can see, they're very hierarchical with the standard drop-down pyramid. Now, this is actually a, uh, the first organisational chart ever recorded, and it's from an American railway company in the mid-1800s. So we took this inspiration, and these are some of our explorations of mapping the John Holland team, firstly without the constraints of the actual physical space. And you can start to see the development of how our thinking evolved.
And finally, we land on this orbital uh, spider's web orc chart. So John Holland has many different teams, building, tunneling, rail, commercial, etc. And one of the client's initial briefing frustrations was siloing of departments. And over COVID, one of the things that I've missed the most while working from home is this passive learning and fortuitous sharing of ideas that you have with the people in your office. It's being able to walk past someone's screen or a meeting room and glance at a whiteboard and be able to maybe solve someone's problem who's been stuck on it for days. So this is really what we wanted to encourage and invigorate at John Holland. So this image just represents that. It's the analog searching process in which you discover something that you didn't know that you were looking for. We come back to the original base building grid and then overlay our sight lines, views, circulation flows, and then spatially how many people we can realistically fit within these spaces, followed by the final result. So workplaces, as you know, really do have so many different types of people. There's introverts, extroverts, people who like noise, open spaces, or those who provide, uh, prefer quiet nooks. And we worked with colder workplace consultants and the user groups to design a mixture of individual and collaborative working and gathering spaces. So this is one of the larger meeting rooms and then a breakout space near the atrium and then of course the boardroom. So this boardroom table went through many different iterations due to the shape of the room. We originally wanted to actually make it out of recycled train track sleepers, but uh, it would have taken too long to cure and dry them, so it's actually made out of red gum. And as you can see, the ceiling is also mirrored and this is the sculpt form oak that's featured throughout uh, level nine. From ceiling to sky, as old sailors used to navigate by the stars, we've designed the ceiling of John Holland as wayfinding visual maps. And this is the original base building, ce building ceiling with the rectangular ceiling tiles. And then this is our sky inspired ceiling of wayfinding and navigation. So the navigation is really very intuitive. Uh, where there's ceiling tiles, you know that there's a workstation beneath. Where there's battens, there's corridors. And then when you see a drop circular ceiling with the Jane Holland graphic, you know that there's an informal gathering or breakout space beneath. For um, wellbeing sustainability, we had Kundal, who were our ESD consultants, to aim for five-star green star interiors. It's still being certified. And I could speak for days about how all the furniture and materials are certified green guard, green tag FSC, CRC, low VOC, etc. But really, I think these things should be a minimum standard for any project, whether you're aiming for certification or not. And the sustainability of this project is about the people. So it's about encouraging people to move around. It's connecting humans to nature with biophilia. It's encouraging play at work. It's access to daylight and views. It's about providing nourishing points, water and tea points, and places where people can sit, talk, and share over news, sorry, over meals. Uh, so it's about people. For us, this is more than an interior office fit out. It really is about placing people at the center of all design decisions. Thank you.